Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke Payson, and I'm honored to be joined by returning guest of the show, Orion Galaxy Kosi. Orion, welcome back. Hey, thank you for having me, brother. I'm thrilled to have you back on. This is your fifth time on MMA FanCast, and I was honored to have you on uh, back right at the uh, kind of the pinnacle of your regional uh, MMA career when you were 7-0 at the time, and you were going on to uh, the Contender Series. Um, and that was several years ago. You won that fight against Matt Dixon by an incredible uh, uh, ground and pound from Crucifix. It was really, really exciting. You got the contract. You've now fought in the UFC twice um, since then. And you have a UFC fight coming up May 20th, which is one of the UFC fight nights coming up in Las Vegas. So let's jump in there. What's it feeling like going into your third official UFC fight now that you've been under contract now for a few years uh just hungry hungry you know i'm tired of uh i was tired of getting sick tired of getting injuries and you, um i've had it once in my life <clears throat> during for my fight career where i got that injury bug or i just wasn't able to find a fight for like two years and mm-hmm. that was back i uh decided to stop being an amateur and try to get my first uh, professional mm-hmm. fight and it took like two and a half, almost three years for between my last am- amateur bout and then my first pro fight. And I was like, bro, like, is it even worth it anymore? Because I'm just doing all these long ass camps and so then nothing comes to fruition. And then, you know, I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to take like a couple week break. And I would have people be like, oh, hey, I have like a one week notice for you. It's like, I'm not really like going to be able to make weight at 170. I could do 185. They'd be like, ah, sorry. You know, I was like, damn, like failed opportunities. But then fortunately I had, you know, more activity in my life going on after I got my first pro fight. We got it to where I had the three fights in five weeks. Mm. That um really helpful in helping setting up that contender series uh fight. And so yeah, I'm just ready to get back in there more often. So I, I want to be very active this year. I say that in the past. I've said it in 2020 after the Mad Dixon fight. I said it even mm. after the loss and after the Blood Diamond win. But you know, I just changed up everything and started focusing on making sure I'm actually taking care of my recovery. Like later on tonight, I'm going in for a massage. I've had, I haven't had a massage in like six months. So that should go to tell you, like, I'm trying to do what I can to make sure I stay healthy. You know, the aches and pains are always going to be there, but we had good rounds this morning of sparring with my boy, Luke. And then I came in and did hard miss with my coach Ezra. So just focusing on that weight cut, staying healthy, staying mean, staying ready. Well, you impressed in your amateur and pro career. Prior to the UFC, you were undefeated. You and your brother uh, kind of hold a record for the UFC for the Contender Series because you were the first brother matching pair um, on the same night, which is back in August of 2020. And now that I think of it, you you and um, he both came on the show, which was great. But that was at the height of COVID. So it, it kind of goes to the fact that it was nice that the UFC in August of 2020 was still, you know, getting fights in. You have fought in the apex for the UFC several times. Has that now become sort of a, a comfortable venue for you? I ain't going to lie, man. I hope the UFC sees this. Quit putting me on the apex cards. I hate that shit. I don't care about fighting in front of like these guys who, they can blow money on super expensive seats for a limited venue. I want to fight in front of the crowd. That's why I was so happy when I got to be on that Dallas card. Mm. And I've already said it multiple times in the past. I, I still apologize for missing weight. That, that was unprofessional. Doesn't matter if I had like, uh, like if I was sick going into it and I couldn't cut the weight anymore, stuff like that. Like I wanted to cut that last pound and a half. I wasn't allowed to, but that wrestler part of me was like, nah, that, that's my fucking job. I, I need to be able to cut that weight. And so I just want to be able to make that weight every time and stay ready at 170, 185. If there's, you know, like a short notice fight and I know for a fact I can't make 170, but the fight's at 170, I'll be like, hey, tell them like 175 catch weight or 180 catch weight. We've seen other people accept it uh-huh. in the past. And I'll take those short notice fights on one week notice, two week notice. But in order for me to make 170s, I'm going to need at least three, four weeks, you know? Um, when it comes to 185, it's a little bit different. I can take that on one, two weeks as long as I'm staying healthy, staying ready. So mm-hmm. game plan, go out. And I know he's going to be coming out being aggressive. And Gilbert, you, you know, he's well-rounded in all aspects. So I'm looking forward to just getting out there, hopefully get a quick finish. That's what we always want, right? We're not paid to stay in there for three rounds. We're paid to get in there, knock the guy out or submit the dude, get the hell out of there. 
Right. Well, I think that's what you and your brother are really known for coming up. I know it was hard for both of you to get the fights that you needed because, you know, you were finishing guys pretty much every fight. You mentioned Gilbert Urbina, if I'm saying his last name right. And I think it's great that you're up front with not wanting to fight in uh, in the apex anymore. And I'm sure this is one of those things where you go in there, you finish him in the first round. Now the UFC wants to show you off, right, and put you on a, a bigger card. So it, it's also super respectful of you to uh, apologize for missing weight. Obviously, that's not apologizing to me, but just letting you know people out there know that, that you are a professional Things happen behind the scenes. I don't think people understand um, how hard it is if you're sick. Imagine for people that haven't fought or had to cut weight as a wrestler, you're sick, and now you have to try to cut weight while you're sick. It's great that you're feeling healthy and good coming into this. You, you mentioned your opponent is going to come out strong. What do you know about him, and, and, and how excited are you to be matched up against him um, You know, for this fight? Uh, I know he's tall. He's six foot three with a seventy five inch reach. So he's four inches taller, four inch advantage. I'm used to that though. Like you know, I've been training with my guys who they're super tall. They have reach, and I've just been working what I always do. Um, I know he has a wrestling background from the state of Texas, and uh, I know those boys they wrestle, and so he can you know mix it up very well. Is what I've seen so far. The only downside on him and I've said this in other interviews as well, is he has a hard tendency of trying to finish fights early. Mm. And, you know, I'm not one of those guys that you can put away early. You, you're going to have to find a way to put me out later on in the fight, which is fine. But, you know, I've been working a lot on my weaknesses of, like, head movement, uh, being more versatile with my striking to help set up my takedowns and using my takedowns to set up my striking a lot better uh, recently. You know, when I was sick after the Blood Diamond fight, uh, my body didn't fully recover even after mm. that. And it took months for me to uh, get back to my normal standing. And then once I finally got back to health, they wanted me to fight in February. And I just wasn't going to be able to cut weight or make weight at all because I was I having a hard time training. I was getting sick about three days out of the week. So I had to take time off work and just focus on my recovery from there on. I told myself, focus on a recovery, make sure you're getting that sleep, plenty of water, proper nutrition, and working out once a day and not two, three times a day for now. Yeah. That really changed things around. And I was able to get a lot healthier. And I haven't been sick since, uh, except for like one time because of bad chicken. <laughs> and uh, a <laughs> while back, that, that was a while back. So, you know, I'm glad I'm not getting sick anymore. I'm not getting injuries. It's literally, it's just soreness. But all athletes, we know exactly how that is, what we got to do to replenish and overcome, you know, the adversity. So this weight cut, I'll make it this time. Nothing's going to stop me from doing that. Uh, and I'm going to come out just mean, ready to go. And I know he's going to come out mean, ready to go too, because he's on a two fight losing streak right now. He's been finishing both fights, but he was what maybe a few selective shots away from being the tough winner. He, I was going to say that that's where he's really known for being on the, being on the season. And, you know, so, and he's got a lot to prove and you have a lot to prove. That's what I, I think all MMA and all cage fighting is a lot to prove. But at the UFC level, there's always something next to prove. You, you know, you brought up the Blood Diamond fight. You've got a very nice decision win. But that was one of those, like, almost cursed fights in the sense that it was scheduled at least two other times before that I can see on Tapology over what ended up being, like, an eight-month period. So it, it is – it's kind of one of those – I'm glad it got out of the way and you got the win, even though you're a little – overweight in the fight because it, it's almost like that fight was kind of a just like a, a doomed fight like in a weird way where it kept getting pushed and canceled and moved back so glad you're healthy another thing for for fighters that are listening to this there is such a thing as overtraining you just kind of mentioned it and how important it is to learn your body to rest and recover um and and what's it like you mentioned your age 28 you're still young in the sense that you have a long fight career potentially but what's it like getting better aware of what your body needs in order to perform better. Even if that means you have to kind of like shut the voice in your head that says, keep training and know that you need recovery time. That balance between training, conditioning and recovery is very hard. I just tell myself, as long as I get two sessions, hard, good, hard sessions, uh, whether it be like my MMA or striking or pure wrestling, pure jujitsu, at least I'm doing something where it's MMA based and then uh, s and uh, mm -hmm. condition or maybe I just go light and I just get like my cardio and I go hit the treadmill 
and I just run for 45 minutes at an incline. You know, like I'm not running super, super fast. I'm keeping it at like six miles an hour, but I'm running at three incline the entire time for 40 to 50 minutes. And, and I hit like a light sauna session afterwards just so I can keep, you know, breathing, all, all that. And then I'll do like a couple of laps in the swimming pool and some shadow boxing while I'm in the pool just to, you know, cool my heart rate back down and start recovering because the pool that we have over at the 24 hour fitness that I use for their sauna is actually a pretty decent pool where it's like, it's nice and cool. It's not warm. It's nice and cool, but it's not too cool. So I like doing that where I'll just, and uh, I'll just take a cold ass shower. Like I'll just hop in, rinse off all that sweat, hot shower, clean. Then once I'm clean, I'll, I'll turn it on cold. I'm like, all right, let's, let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that whole that whole process that you just ran through. I know it takes a while to kind of find the perfect process to you. Uh, uh, a random a random mental health kind of shout out. You mentioned the sauna, and there's a lot of good research coming out. I'm a professional mental health counselor on how sauna sessions for people that aren't even athletes that aren't even training can be very good for anti depression benefits. And, and, and sometimes even better than SSRI. So for people out there that might be hearing this, there's a lot of good ways. You have to hydrate to be in a sauna. There's a lot of good ways to use um, the, the sauna treatment for even dealing with mental health issues. But you brought it up as far as your recovery process, which is great. You've mentioned wanting to make a statement, wanting to really show off your skills. Is there a skill set that you think without giving game plan away, you said you're going to meet him and you're going to use better, more well-rounded strikes to set up? Uh, your takedowns is there a skill that you still want to kind of display uh for the ufc you've already finished fights you're a finisher is there something that you kind of want to still show up in this fight hope i've almost had it land a couple of times and so without giving anything away let's hope it lands this time and get that sweet 50k bonus okay yeah we don't want to give anything away um it was it was funny after the masvidal fight where he knocked out um uh ben Askren. he he turned out that he was actually training that actual jumping knee that finished it. So you have your secret yeah. stuff, which is just fantastic. I'm thrilled to have you back on. I can't wait to continue to follow. I, I feel lucky uh, to have followed you right before you got on the contender series, you and your brother, and to really be able to see uh, what you're becoming in UFC. Thanks so much for coming on the show. For everybody out there, UFC Fight Night, uh, May 20th. It's going to be a middle of the afternoon, at least Eastern Standard Time, starting at 4 p.m. I appreciate you coming on so much. Do you have shout outs, sponsors, anybody that you need to thank as we as we get ready to let you get to training? Um, we'll, we'll save that. I'll uh, I'll do one more with you the week of the fight. I know this was a short one, so we'll do a full 20, 30 minute next time. And let's get planned for the uh, the week of the fight. I fly in Tuesday, so maybe we can do that Tuesday. Okay, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll set something up. Thanks so much. I can't wait to have you back on the show. You've been listening to Luke Faison from a Fancast with special guest, Orion Galaxy Kosi. Thanks so much, bud. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Hey, you take care. I got to get back to work. You got it, bud.